This time on Barmy, I get a tour of a trench. And this particular dugout is leaking like a sieve, so it would be very, very unpopular. A lovely cup of tea. That's not bad, is it? Well, I'm really, really enjoying that. And a much needed history lesson. My name is Joe Cowan, and I'm on a mission to meet the military obsessives who take things to the next level. This week on Barmy, I'm meeting respected historian and military advisor to films such as War Horse, Andy Robertshaw. Andy. Good afternoon. You? I'm very well, Joe. Joe, nice to meet you. And nice to meet you. Yeah. Good. Well, welcome to a lovely Season. day in glorious Elam. Yeah. Season, yeah. We've got, got squalls of rain. We've got mud. It's. Uh, I suppose you could say it was sort of what you might expect from the Great War. Well, let's see it. OK, let's go for a wander. OK. I'd been invited to spend some time with Andy at a World War I trench he uses for reenactments, school tours, and even as a film set. So what we're looking at here is you've got the German frontline trench. The British trenches beyond it were built first and they're much, much deeper. The German system is relatively shallow. Then it now shows up on Google Earth. Yeah, I, I spotted you, it on Google Earth. See, yeah, I did really my research. Yeah, yeah, of course. Absolutely. Oh, wow. So how often do you come up here? At least once a month, if not more. Um, you know, it, it's quite frequent. OK, what you've got here is a piece of German trench, front line, German-style barbed wire. We've normally had a mortar in there and a machine gun where the barbed wire now is. But Amazing. we'll go for a walk around. Yeah, go sure. on. The trench is so accurate that it often plays host to TV crews. Andy told me there was a Nepalese crew here today, making a film all about the first ever Gurkha to be awarded the Victoria Cross. Okay. Oh, that's amazing. So, uh, so what you like, craters? There's craters. They're all being dug yeah. with JCBs, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Barbed wire. Would these signposts have been here back in the day? Yes, they would, because you need it. to know. I mean, this one is Hawthorne Trench, so therefore you give the grid reference. Uh -huh. You know, this is an out route, that's a, an in route, because if you've got casualties, you clearly don't want to be going down with a stretcher and meeting people coming up with supplies. We've then got the engineer's store, and we can actually get in on the far sides. Can, what, the, yeah, we can, can go, go around that. Yeah. I don't like people going down the ladders because they're a bit dodgy, as you can yeah, imagine. Yeah. When we go in, if you keep your hands out of your pockets, yeah, yeah, that sure. way if you fall over, you break the, the fall with, with your hands, okay, not, not your sure, nose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, clearly the fires are hot and barbed wire is sharp. There we are. That's okay. it. And don't try, ever try and jump over a trench. Just take it steady. There's no problem. And the, all the problems we're going to have of getting around in here is the ones they would have had. This is why we put trench boards down, yeah, you know, which today we call duck boards. They were called trench boards at the time. So how long did it take to build it? The, the, the actual system had probably been dug out in no more than two days. Mm. The revetting took a long time. Um, probably, I would say, with people all working, a month of, of work for about five people. For five people, yeah. yeah. But remember, if we were here with a platoon of 28 men, or perhaps 40 men, we could do all of this in a weekend. You know? yeah. It's a different world. I was keen to find out more about Andy and his connection to this part of history. But it was clear that Andy was just here to talk about history. So there was nothing else to do but sit back and enjoy the ride. Small arms ammunition in here. Periscope so you can see out without getting shot. Pilk Street is a, a trench on the Somme that, that we know well. In 1918, you wouldn't know that in 1939 it would start over again. But it gives you some ideas about where but infantrymen might take some shelter out of the worst of the rain. And there is no Christmas truce for the French or the Belgians. By 1916, our men are being told, this is not the war. This is a phase of the war, it will change. 
There's a story about one servant filling a primus stove with petrol rather than paraffin. Uh, the dugout burnt for five days. And trench warfare becomes more elaborate, of course, as people get used to it, because nobody planned for long periods of static warfare. So what we're gonna do is go through here, then into a, a small dugout. So it's slippery in here and very, very dark. Oh yeah. Okay. So, you know, you would be basically four officers in here. Yeah. Because at any time, two of them are on duty. So you've got two guys sleeping, everybody else up there. Probably have a signal in here as well. You know? So you've got to really get on with who you're uh, sharing with then. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> called, it's called hot bedding. The, the beds never gets cold. But the key point then is that what matters is just surviving, staying alive. Yeah. The routine here is that you work at night. That's when you dig your trenches, that's when you repair, build your dugouts all down the dark. And then daytime, largely your daily tasks, cleaning, repairing, food. And then you sleep in the afternoon, which all being well, other than today, is, is the, the warmest and driest time of the day. Yeah. Just thinking about the, not only this getting built under combat conditions, but maintaining it, con con constantly having to make repairs and... It's, it's constantly requiring supplies coming forward and, and people doing more and more work, you know. There's a one good thing about trench systems, you don't have bored soldiers. Yeah, absolutely. Well, should we go for a bit of a walk yeah, through? let's do it. Let's see what we can come up with. What's the chances of a uh, World War One style brew? Very good chance. Very chance. That's I've got everything to, yeah. ready. Yeah, that's going now. The soldiers would never call it tea. It was always char. Because so many soldiers have served in India. Put that on there and stop stuff falling into it. We then drop that on top. When it's good and hot, we've got sugar and tea, okay? Condensed milk, we're away. Ow! Ooh, are you all right? Yeah, 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 that's hot. Okay, here we go. Right, spoon tea. And it goes, the way you open the tin of condensed milk, First World War style -y. Oh, like that, and there you go, like that. And then what we'll do is we'll spoon on there, like that. Fine, cup of tea. Cheers. Cheers. Thank You're very you good helps. Yeah. You know what? It's, it's hot. Can you just feel like how much that would, uh, what that it's would do warm. for morale? Yeah, that's spot on. That's not bad, is it? <laughs> I'm really, really enjoying that, yeah. yeah. I think we're going to be just enough time to get you into kit before it's too dark, so let's do it quickly as we can. It had been fascinating to get a glimpse of what day-to-day -day life was like in the trenches. So when Andy offered me the opportunity to try on the exact uniform the soldiers would have been wearing, I couldn't resist. Can you get some braces on those trousers? Get, get that shirt on. Putty is a Urdu word that means bandages, stops mud and dirt getting into your boots. Let's make you look smarter. Yep. On it goes. Yeah. What we now need is to give you a rifle. Pickaxe goes down the back of your pack. You are now a soldier of the 1st Battalion Lancashire Fusiliers. I've always been the kind of guy to try a few sprints out when trying on new shoes, and today was no different. Oh! <laughs> ah, the fallen of the Somme. Where we are right now is virtually in no man's land. The front line is behind us, and where you are now is at the entrance to a tunnel called a Russian sap that leads out to a crater. That probably wouldn't be occupied during daylight, but it would be at night. So it could be that tonight, as part of your one hour on guard duty, one hour resting, one hour actually working, you're going to be sent out. No working for you tonight. You're going to have three hours out there with a mate. And your job is to alert anybody behind you if the enemy start moving or doing anything. Uh, and the point then is, if that happens, you shoot, you do not challenge them, you simply open fire. And what you don't ever do is run back. Because if you run back through here, they're going to think you're an enemy. Well, I think I'm going to go over the top. Uh, keep your head down. And oh, by the way, see you on the other side. We will. We will. Okay. All right, Andy, thank you very much. I'm off. Good luck. You're going to need it. I've really enjoyed my day in the trenches and gained a greater appreciation for what those young men went through. And speaking of young men, just before I left, I met the owner of the land. He told me his son Toby had started the trench when he was just 16 years old. I had to meet this guy. 
So here we are, we are back in Elam, and this time we're here to see a young man called Toby, who we discovered is the guy who started this trench when he was 16 years old, um, and just con somehow convinced his parents that they should let him build a trench in their, in their land out the back. So we're gonna have a chat with him and find out what his crack is, basically. Why would you build a trench in your back garden? Hello. Hello, how are you? Nice to see you again. This must be Toby. This is Toby. Um, do you want to head straight up or should we get a cup of tea? Or... Um, we head up yeah, yeah, cool. It's so crazy, such a crazy thing. That it was 16, right, when you built the trench? Uh, 16 with the idea, then 17 by the time we got okay, it. OK, got you. Were you interested in trenches before that? Um, yeah, I love, I've it. always loved military history. Yeah. Um, especially World War One. Yeah. Because just coming from a farming background, like farming families were always quite big. Yeah. And so, like when the war came about, a lot I've got quite a lot of sort of family members that went over. Oh really? Um, in both conflicts. So that's sort of what's given you the like the initial yeah. in interest in World World War One, I, I guess. Yeah. And I, I like World War One. There's so much. You from can the do. off, it was clear how much respect Toby had for World War One soldiers. Glorious stuff. I wanted to find out more about how he was using his passion to bring history back to life. So the most common is the school trips, um, and that's mostly year five and six kids. Okay. And then we have our public open days where anyone can come along. Yeah, nice. So for you stood here now, think like this is your creation, you made this. Yeah. How does it feel when you stand up here and kind of take it all in? Um, difficult. Like, really? Yeah, I didn't think it would take this. off like yeah. the way it does it was more a thing um for me and dad to do really and mum to get involved as well and so it's like a family thing yeah oh, um, nice and brought you guys together yeah yeah we have quite good days up here let's have a little wander around so you said like your dad was kind of like a big was it was he an influence you think or did you guys um, decide to start it together or like uh what? well mum and dad have always been a big influence on my like, interest in history yeah because of their families uh -huh. um and then I basically came home one day and said, "Can I build one?" And so they said, "Yes." So, <laughs> how did you how did you convince your parents? It just happened that um, the next door neighbour had, um, I think it was about a twelve ton digger. Yeah. So we went and grabbed them, and were like, right, just drive it straight up the hill, <laughs> <laughs> start digging. We came out, and they were like, "Yeah, sure, no yeah." Worries. And it, it wasn't supposed to be this big. Um, originally, it was only supposed to go up to about that big tree. When the digger man came, he was like, "Yeah, I've got a bit carried away digging this." <laughs> and it ended up being about twice as big, so we were really? like, right, okay. So yeah. it's like, it's an actual accident that it is as big as it is. So when you started it, were you thinking business at the... No, no. Not at all, no. So you just wanted somewhere that you could come and hang out and yeah. pay soldiers, basically? Yeah, it was just sort of um, one of those, nice, give you nice. something to talk, to talk about when you go down for a pint. It's a conversation starter. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so if we head up this way... And yeah, sure. So we've got the cookhouse. I was really enjoying my time with Toby. Andy had given me a much needed history lesson, but through Toby, I was finding out about all the benefits the trench had for people around today. No way. We had one school here that, for the majority of the kids, it was the first time that they've actually been in a field, let alone, because it was real. In, C city kids, Yeah, real yeah, in, yeah. In, in, in city school. Yeah. Um, and so like, you come here, and, come in nice weather you come around the trench do two and a half hours in the trench and then we've nice. got like the sheep lambing sometimes so if you've got a school that's here when they're lambing they can have a look at that as well and so you built the trench but has the tr trench helped you develop as a person oh yeah definitely you'd say so um, yeah. i've always sort of like talking but i think now i'm you've got some fairly okay about in public speaking um, yeah, which probably so. wouldn't be able to do without this um you meet so many nice people as well really yeah um and i love talking to old soldiers um mm either from, there's not so many anymore sadly from um, World War II, yeah. but you meet soldiers from like the Korean War which you never really hear about. And yeah, yeah. You talk to them and the stories they're telling you is just... Mind blowing. Yeah. I was talking to one of the representatives from British Legion yeah. and one conversation led to another. A lot of veterans that come back that have been injured that don't have anywhere to go straight away. Yeah. They have a British Legion village, yeah. I think it's in Lenham. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a lot of them want to go out and see places like museums and things, but just to get out and with about. the fighting aspect, some of them don't like it. So you take kind of like the combat. Yeah, out you don't of have to completely. talk about the conflicts. Okay, you talk you. about 
what it was like to live in a hole for four years. And is that something that you've done? Um, so that's something that we're planning on trying to start up. Could be something yeah. really sort of helpful and yeah. beneficial here. So Toby had built a trench, set it up as an education centre and passed on his love of history to hundreds of people, all before he could even buy a beer. That's my kind of guy. Andy had made me think about the forgotten people that were lucky enough to make it home. And Toby is making efforts to give today's veterans a safe space to come and learn about history. So with all this going on, would you, would you say that you're a little bit balmy, do you reckon? Yeah, but in a good way. Good balmy? <laughs> yeah, good balmy. Everyone's a bit balmy. <laughs> I think I've used my balmy in a good way. From the outside, a lot of people think, oh, that's a bit strange, but it's so, like I'm trying to get everything that's coming out of it, I'm trying to have like a good outcome from it. Yeah. So it might be a bit strange, but it's a good strange. Before I got here, I thought this, this is weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just such a bizarre concept and everything, but uh, like, to come and kind of like hear your perspective of it, it's been really yeah. good and it's been nice to hear about all like the good that's come from it. Everyone should have the chance to come and have a look at history. And Nice one. Well, Long may it continue. Yeah, hopefully. Toby, I think. We'll call it a day there, but yeah. thank you so much for, uh, for having us along, man. Thank it's you. been great. Uh, great, thank you. It has been quality. For just a small patch of land in the Kent countryside, there were some great things coming out of the Hawthorne Trench, and it was all down to the passionate people who saw this as more than just a hole in the ground.